Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the difference between someone, everyone, and anyone, and somebody, anybody, and everybody. Let's get started by looking at the meanings of these words and how we use them. Okay, let's begin with someone and somebody to begin with. Uh, you can remember someone and somebody and anyone and anybody follow very similar rules as some and any. If you've seen the video on our channel talking about some and any, maybe you remember um, the rules that I'm going to explain here. You can check that video for some extra information about those grammar points too. So let's start with someone and somebody. We use someone and somebody in positive statements. So a simple statement, not a question, in other words. When we make a positive statement, we use someone and somebody in that sentence structure. We also use these two words in requests and in offers. So keep in mind, these are two categories of questions. So a request question or an offer question. Let's take a look at some examples of this now. First of all, there's someone at the office. So here I've chosen someone. There's someone at the office. This is a positive statement. So not a question, just a statement. It's a positive here. The next example, can you send someone to help me? Can you send someone to help me? This is a request. So a specific type of question, a request question. Can you send someone to help me? The third example sentence is an offer. Would you like to talk to somebody? Would you like to talk to somebody? So here we have request, offer, positive statement. We can use someone or somebody in each of these examples. So I've used someone, someone, and somebody here, but actually we can change each of these to the other choice. Both are fine in each of these example sentences. I'll talk more about the difference between one and buddy a little bit later. For now, however, let's move on to the difference between anyone and anybody. Okay, so this is a key difference between someone and somebody. Anyone and anybody this is used in negative statements. These are used in negative statements. Someone and somebody used in positive statements. So this follows the same rule as some and any. So in negative statements, and we use anyone and anybody in information questions. So that means that not uh, requests, not offers, but you're looking for some kind of information. Um, we use anyone and anybody in these cases. So let's look at a few examples of this. First, I don't think anyone is at the office. Don't think anyone is at the office. So here we've used anyone because it's a negative. Here's my negative. It's in the do not. So not right here. This is my negative. Therefore, I've used anyone here. One more example sentence, a question this time. Has anybody seen my keys? Here I've used anybody. I've used this because this is an information question. I'm looking for some information I don't have now. This is not a request, it's not an offer. So I shouldn't use someone or somebody. I need to use anyone or anybody. I'm looking for information. This third example sentence is the same. Why hasn't anyone returned my calls? Here, anyone. And I'm looking for information. In this case, a why. This is a why question. So again, not a request, not an offer. I'm looking to find something new. I'm looking for information, so I should use anyone. Again, just as I talked about with someone and somebody, I can change this anyone, anybody, and anyone to the other word. It's fine to use the other word here. For example, anybody, anyone, anybody. That's perfectly fine. Again, I'll explain more a little bit later here. But remember, uh, anyone and anybody is used in negative statements. Someone, somebody used in positive statements. This is one key difference. Okay, 
but let's move along now to everyone and everybody. Everyone and everybody, uh, this will follow kind of a different rule than someone uh, and anyone. We use everyone and everybody to refer to all people related to a situation or related to a group. So this could mean a class, it could mean every person in an office, it could mean in a city, in a country. Uh, so it just depends on the group or the situation. We use this word when we want to talk about all people related to that group or related to the situation. So let's look at some examples. Okay, first one. Everyone in our class graduated. So here, everyone in our class graduated refers to all the people in our class. So uh, everyone in that group of people. In this case, the group is the class. So all people in the class. Another example. It was great to see everybody at the reunion. So everybody here shows us, again, all people. And this could be a class reunion, it could be a family reunion, a company reunion. Um, so this just means it was great to see all the related people, so the people related to the situation at this reunion event. One more example then. Everybody had a great time. So here everybody shows us everybody in the situation. So maybe everybody who attended the event had a great time. Everybody who attended the party had a great time. This is quite a common expression after an event of some kind. So again, as we saw with uh, the first two groups, we can actually change each of these words to the other word. So everyone can be replaced with everybody. Uh, same thing here, everybody and everybody can be replaced with everyone. So, I want to end this lesson with a quick introduction uh, or a quick overview to the difference between these two endings, one and buddy. What is the difference here? Really, one, the words that end in one, someone, anyone, and everyone, they sound more formal than the words that end in buddy. So. Um, we can actually use these interchangeably. Interchangeably means we can mix and match them. We can choose which one we prefer. So that means the meanings are the same, uh, like their purpose is the same. It's just up to us to choose. So why would we do this? Why would we choose one word and not the other word? Um, you can choose according to the syllables. If you remember, syllables is the number of beats. A syllable is a beat of a word. So for example, somebody, somebody has three beats. Someone has only two beats, two syllables. This is important when you are writing, especially like writing poetry, writing lyrics for music, or maybe you're trying to write a nice essay, for example. We are listening for which words sound nice to our ears. So sometimes the word somebody sounds nice. Sometimes the word someone sounds better. So it's up to us, meaning we can decide, we can choose which word we prefer to use. So you just have to listen and kind of feel which you prefer. There's no difference in meaning. It's just a sound preference and a little bit of a formality difference. So, I hope that this lesson helped you understand the differences between these words a little bit. As I said, if you want some more information about the difference between some and any, you can search the YouTube channel for that video as well. Uh, of course, if you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check us out at EnglishClass101.com for some other good English study tools. Thanks very much for watching this lesson, and we will see you again soon. Bye-bye!